Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit come and enlighten the understanding of each of you to understand well what is His will for our lives, for the lives of each of us. I have nothing more glorious, nothing more joyful in my life than to do that which pleases my Lord, to do His will. His will is sovereign, but when a person sacrifices to do His will, then this person is happy because the will of God is always perfect. And the more we give, more we receive. The more we serve God doing His holy will, more we receive from Him His blessings. David said this, David said, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you your heart's desires. Meaning, we do not need to worry in receiving blessings, in seeking constantly for the promises of God for our lives. We just need to come and please God with our lives, sacrifice it for the honor and praise of God and He will contemplate us with the desires of our heart. The Apostle Paul teaches through the Holy Spirit that we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God. A living sacrifice. Therefore I beseech you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which pleases God. So when we do the will of God, we are fulfilled. I at least can say this to you because I have had and have this experience with me. So I would say the secret for you to maintain yourself in faith which is the most difficult thing you can do, the most difficult for you to conquer blessings. It's not difficult. It's very easy because you manifest faith and you conquer blessings. Difficult is to maintain it as the example of the ten lepers. Nine, the ten were healed. Ten had faith to be healed but only one returned, one was saved. Jesus said, He asked, Where are the other nine who were with you? And then He added, Go, your faith has saved you. Meaning He came to thank the Lord Jesus for what He had done. He was faithful to the Lord Jesus. He sacrificed. Now healed, he wanted to serve the Lord Jesus. So I would say, as I've said, that the secret for you to maintain yourself in faith is to give. Not to give simply offerings on the altar. That's easy. That's very easy. 
the rich would bring big offerings to the temple. Big offerings, big sums of gold, clothes, and so forth. But Jesus said that the poor widow gave more than all of them put together, meaning the offering which pleases God is that offering which involves the sacrifice of one's life. You deny yourself to please God. And God sees this when you, for example, deny your flesh, the desires, the lusts, that appetite, that sexual appetite. When you deny your flesh because of your faith in Jesus, you are offering your body as a holy sacrifice acceptable to God. And God sees this. And because He sees this, He will he will bless your life. And He allows that all of us to be tempted. If His own Son was tempted, so He allows that we also be tempted. However, he does not allow us to be tempted above our strength, our capacity and ability to overcome that temptation. So it is true. For you to maintain yourself in the first love, you need to be constantly surrendering to the Lord Jesus, giving yourself sacrificing, praying with the persecutions. You are persecuted at church. You are treated unjustly because of your faith. You pray for your family members who condemn you because of your faith. You are condemned. You are persecuted. You are treated unjustly. You are that person who has suffered horrors in the flesh because of your faith, the pure faith, the genuine faith which you have dedicated to the Lord Jesus. Do you think God does not see this? He sees it. And that's why you maintain yourself in faith. That is the reason why you are always hot in faith. You have pleasure in going to the house of God to praise Him with your life, to offer to God your sacrifice of praise, which are the fruit of the lips. You offer your dedicated life to help your neighbor. All of this forms part of our giving, our offering. Our offering is not simply just what we place on the altar. Because if it were to be like this, if the offering itself was enough, then the rich would put huge sums of money on the altar and remain living in their sins. And as they made their vows, they completed their vows on the altar. Now, they could sin freely. No, this is injustice on the side of God, if God would accept this kind of offering. When a person goes to the altar and places his life fully, his soul, when he detaches in order to serve the Lord Jesus, then he blesses one's life. Of course, it doesn't bless immediately. No, it's not immediately. It's not in that day. But you can be sure you will not die without seeing the blessing of God, the answer of God in your life. For example, the Lord said through prophet Jeremiah, Seek me and you will find me 
when you seek me with all your heart with all your heart and then the person asks how can I seek God with all my heart what does it mean to seek God with all my heart so see if you are a supporter a supporter of Corinthians a supporter of Palmeiras, São Paulo, Flamengo, Vasco, whoever it may be. You form part of a fan club. So wherever your club, your team goes to play, you go there at your own cost. I remember some years ago, Corinthians, I think it was Corinthians. They went to play the finals of the Club World Cup. And they went to play in Japan. And many people went to Japan. Many Brazilians went to Japan. They sold houses, apartments, cars, jewelry. They made all the efforts, but they went. They went there and Corinthians was champions, if I'm not mistaken. But it doesn't matter. They went. They came, they came back filled with joy. Then they started over from zero, but they sacrificed. They put all their strength, all their soul, all their heart. Palmeiras was the same thing. I don't know if it was Korea, if I'm not mistaken. People took as well everything they had, but they went to follow Palmeiras there in the other side of the world. And when they got there, Palmeiras lost. So they came back frustrated, downcast. They wasted what they had and not had. They entered debts to get there. To bring back frustration, defeat and weakness. Here, these days, a match after match, the fans decided to confront each other meaning they're killing themselves, killing themselves, putting their own lives at risk and even dying because of a team, because of a passion. We call this fanaticism because they don't think, they don't reason. Fanaticism is faith without reason. It's faith without thinking, without conscious. Fanaticism is that thing where the person is blind. It's a blind faith. And so when a person does this, when they have a blind faith, they are fanatics. And then you verify that he put all his heart there. If people would do this, in seeking to receive the Holy Spirit, their lives would be something else. But that's it. People do not think. People do not think. In fact, there is even a study which reached the conclusion that the current generation is the most foolish generation there hasn't been such a foolish generation as the one we are living in right now. Because people are stopping to think, they're stopping to reason, they are involving themselves in passions, in everything, be it in the internet, be it in TikTok, whatever it may be. People are diving into things which the world presents. They surrender. They give themselves. They risk everything 
For what? For nothing. Absolutely nothing. If they would do what they do for their teams, if they do what they would do for their idols, their artists, whoever it may be, if they do it for Jesus, if they surrender, they would see the glory of God here in this world. That is why Jesus says that the kingdom of God is taken by force. You need to be aggressive constantly. We need to be aggressive constantly to violate our being, our flesh, to violate our lusts so that we may inherit the kingdom of heaven. So many people grow cold in faith. They grow cold in the first love because they also grow cold in their surrender. Their prayers are now cold. They are lukewarm prayers. They are prayers which hit the, hit the ceiling and come back. And that is why they grow cold, because they're not surrendering. They are not presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. They're not. And God sees this. What can He do? He gives us the right to choose what we want to do with our lives. That is why He gave us spirit, the mind. He gave us the intellect, reasoning for us to think, so that we may take the right decision. So still, in the aspect of the first love, which we see in the first letter of Ephesus, the church of Ephesus, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, we see that Jesus approved the works, the deeds, the dedication, the effort, but the first love had already been put off. Why? Because they stopped sacrificing, sacrificing their own being. They stopped giving themselves and they started doing a mechanic work. As the case, how many people are generous, are good, they are charitable, they give food to the poor, to those who are hungry. Excellent work. And we work on this. How many people are giving themselves to reduce and minimize the pain of hunger which other people have, which is growing? And this is already a prophecy which Jesus spoke of. So many people are doing their best, giving their best, and thinking the following, well, if I help the poor, if I take a person out of hunger, if I feed a person, so I am in good relation before God. And then they carry on living in an irregular life. Well, I ask, do you think God accepts this type of thing? Do you think God is a fool who is deceived by good works, by charity? That is why we have it written, God said, the righteous, one who is justified, my righteous shall live, meaning he'll have life by faith, 
and not by the works of charity. Charity we should do regardless of our faith, regardless if we are or not sinners. Charity is an obligation. It's the second great commandment, the first to love God. The first love is to love God. The second is to love your neighbor. Now it's pointless for you to love your neighbor and forget God. Is it not so? So, my friend, if you are cold in faith, if you are growing cold in faith, being discouraged in faith, it's because you stopped acting your faith. You stopped giving. Giving what, Bishop? I have nothing to give. No, you have. It's inside of you. I'm not speaking of money, food. But of what you have received from God. I'm giving to you what I have received from God. Daily we are here giving what we received from God. And the more I give, the more I receive. And while I am giving, I am activating, exercising my faith. And once it being exercised, I become strengthened, more stimulated to continue giving more. That's it, my friend. If you are there complaining, lamenting, because you feel nothing, go to the church. If you feel nothing, the Word of God is not touching you anymore. It has no meaning for you. You hear what you heard many times, numerous times you heard, but it doesn't speak much to you. But it does speak. Because you have not had ears to hear, and that's the problem. You have not had ears to hear, and those who have the Holy Spirit have ears to hear. And here is the advantage of people receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. When people have the baptism with the Holy Spirit, they have ears to hear. They are humble. They are humble. They are obedient. They seek to always give what received. They give what they have according to what they have. They can give more than what they received. Each one gives more than what he has. So, when a person has the Holy Spirit, he has ears to hear and obey. But when a person does not have the Holy Spirit, though they even speak in tongues, we can say, they even prophesy, so they say, but they are the type of person who is cold. They know that they are lukewarm. They know they're not well spiritually. They know, they know, they know. Our conscience accuses us when we are not well spiritually speaking. Yes or no? At least mine is like this. I don't know if yours. I assume so. I believe when our conscience starts to scream, to accuse, it's because there is something which is wrong within us. So, if you are that person who stopped giving what you receive from God, it's because you have nothing left. You're empty. So, you need to have the Holy Spirit to have ears to hear and understand the Word of God and practice it. Do you understand, my friend? There is nothing more precious in this life than our salvation, your salvation. That is why God says with clarity, then again you shall discern the difference between those who serve me and those who do not serve me. So the Christian faith 
is summarized in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he is called the Lord, the only Lord, who is worthy to be served. Then again, you shall discern the difference. There needs to be this difference. There has to be a difference between those who serve God and those who do not serve God. So when you see a person who is blessed, it's because that person, and I say blessed, not just to have money, because the rich also have money, and still, they're not blessed. Normally not. And Jesus said that. How difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. But I want to say that when a person, when a person is of God, when a person gives himself, surrenders himself, when a person sacrifices himself for that in which he believes in, oh my friend, in this case the Word of God, believing in the Word of God, then he makes the difference. His life is a difference. And this has to happen with you. In fact, I don't even need to go far, you who are watching me this moment. And once you were hot, you would work, you would give, you would do the work of God. You were always available to help. You would not see, you couldn't wait for you to come out of work, to go to church and fulfill your vows towards God and help other people and etc. Yes or no? Do you remember? Yes. How is it today? Oh, oh, Bishop. I don't know. I know. And you know. You grew cold. You gave ears to someone or people or other people who, one way or the other, influenced you and discouraged you and you grew cold. A person does not fall overnight. Did you know that? When a pastor falls and is fallen and he comes talk to us, he says, Oh, Bishop, I messed up. No one messes up overnight. No one falls unwillingly. When a person falls, it's a process, a slow but constant process. Because when a person falls once, it is even easier to get up. But when he goes falling slowly, bit by bit, he falls consciously. Meaning, he falls and establishes his fall. He falls and establishes his fall. And when he falls once and for all, it seems there is no way. But there is. We spoke about this yesterday. You who are churchless, fallen, you who were hot in faith, you lived the first love, there is a chance for you. Of course. Of course. Are you seeing this? Do you know why you are seeing this? Because God is waiting for you. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you to take an action, a decision, based on His Word. Those who have ears, let Him hear what the Spirit says. There is a chance for you. There is a chance, of course there is. From the moment which you do your part. Don't wait and count on the grace of God because nothing's going to happen. The grace of God is already manifested in your life. The grace of God is already being manifested right now because we are speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is touching you. I am sure of this. But on your side, there needs to be an action. So the grace of God matches with faith from our side. God manifests grace and we manifest faith. So grace and faith are married and then they become one body. 
God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus and that I hope that you have been helped. I hope that you have been touched and I hope that you have courage to act this faith which the Holy Spirit gave you this morning. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. What is different about these people? Where do those sparkles in their eyes come from? These are the faces of those who found the greatest wealth that completely changed their lives. All of them have received the Holy Spirit and that is the greatest difference. The Holy Spirit came upon me and I had such peace inside of me. I never felt that peace. I didn't want the service to finish. And what happened as well, I started laughing, I started smiling. It was such, it was one of the happiest day, no, the happiest day in my life. I had love, I had joy, and now I understood the importance of seeking the Holy Spirit. Change inside of me and the appearance of me it is completely changed. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. The Campaign of Israel of the Difference at the Temple of Solomon Look for a universal church near you to learn how to take part. This is your UCKG timetable. Open seven days a week. Helping you make a new beginning. Our Monday service is for financial success. We offer guidance and prayer for your financial independence, prosperity and success. Every Tuesday is our healing day. We pray for healing, miracles and well-being. Wednesdays, the Faith School. Our midweek service to boost your faith through Bible studies, prayers for revival, baptism in the Holy Spirit, and spiritual growth. Thursday, the Love Therapy, a service dedicated for your love life, with prayer and guidance for a happy marriage, love life and family. Friday, Spiritual Cleansing, powerful prayers with the laying on of hands will be made for you, for your deliverance and spiritual protection from evil. Saturday, Empowerment, our Saturday service has the aim to lead you pray more effectively, receive the spirit of power and strength. Our main service, Sunday, encounter with God. Dedicate your week to God by seeking him first. Get closer to God, renew your faith, receive salvation and the power of the Holy Spirit. You are more than welcome to join us in one of our services. Come to experience the power of God, be revived, find peace and joy. Pastors and assistants are available for prayer and counseling before and after the services. For more information visit uckgmacau.com. This is your Dixuan Yu, Wunjo Jung Sum Si Gan Biu. Mui Zhou Chat Tin Ying Yip. 助你重新开始。我们的星期一服务是财务上的成功。我们会为你的财务独立。风雨和成功祈祷。或提供指导。每逢星期二是我们的康复日。我们祈求自悦、奇迹和幸福。星期三、信仰学校。每星期的中段,我们通过圣经研究,复兴祈祷,圣灵的洗礼,和灵性成长来增强你的信仰。周四,爱情疗法 
，专为你的爱情生活而设，为婚姻幸福、爱情生活、家庭幸福祈祷和指引。星期五，心灵净化，将为你进行按手有力的祈祷，为你的拯救，以及保护你远离邪恶。周六，赋予能力。我们星期六的服务指，在带领你更有效地祈祷，获得圣灵的力量和能力。我们的主要服务，星期日与神相遇，首先寻求神，将你的一周献给上帝，亲近神，更新你的信仰。接受救恩和圣灵的力量，非常欢迎你加入我们任何一项服务。快来经历神的大能，重生，找到平安与喜乐。牧师和助理可以在崇拜前后为你祈祷和辅导。欲了解更多信息，请访问 u c k g m a c a o c o m